I think that the most important thing was that he started telling the truth. In his very first press conference, he said, the Soviet Union will lie and they will cheat and they will commit any crime to further the goals of communism. He was a very serious student of communist methods and history. People think that he was some kind of an amiable dunce as uh, you know, one of these uh, uh, you know, prominent Washington political figures described him. Ronald Reagan was a very, very smart and, and educate, well-educated man. Remember, he wasn't just an actor and a governor of California. When he was an actor, he was the head of the Screen Actors Guild. This is a trade union, and he was the head of it at the time when the communists were attempting to infiltrate and have influence in Hollywood. And there were a number of uh, patriotic American actors and, and others, producers, directors, who were afraid about the possibility of, of communist propaganda, Soviet propaganda, uh, making its way significantly into the American movies. And they were uh, fighting their influence in, in Hollywood. And they did not want their unions to be taken over by the communists. They saw how ruthlessly the communists operated in their Machiavellian bureaucratic maneuvering to seize power over these unions, and they fought back. And Ronald Reagan was part of this. There were a number of major differences between uh, the Reagan administration and the Carter administration before him, and I, could, I should also say the Nixon and Ford administrations as well. During the decade before, <clears throat> they had a policy of detente which is the French word for relaxation of tensions. And it was the hope of many, many people in the foreign policy establishment that if we reached a number of different agreements with the Soviet Union, that there would be precisely a relaxation of tensions. Arms control agreements, exchange agreements, scientific, technical, housing, you know, cultural, all sorts of exchanges. The problem with the policy of detente was that it was essentially addressing the symptoms of tension rather than the causes of tension. The Western moral tradition has been dictated by the, let's say, the Greco-Roman Judeo-Christian moral philosophy and applied ethics, uh, <clears throat> which are fundamentally grounded in the natural law, a pre-Christian concept that was developed by Aristotle, which is something that is completely compatible with the uh, basic moral codes of major world civilizations, but was codified in a certain way in the West. And he, in his very first press conference, he said, the Soviet Union will lie and they will cheat and they will commit any crime to further the goals of communism. And they will do this because they have a different morality than we do. An end justifies the means morality, uh, <clears throat> which has no scruples. That was a major difference right there. Perhaps the most dramatic thing about the Reagan policy was that the president started telling the truth. Before the Reagan administration, there was no intelligence collection about any of this. There was no intelligence collection about Soviet propaganda, disinformation, active measures, all of this. And when we came in to office, we changed the national intelligence topics and we ordered the intelligence community and our diplomats to start collecting information on all of this. And they did a very good job. We had an interagency committee that would analyze this stuff. <clears throat> and then we selectively declassified this information 
and we ended up publicizing it in published reports, uh, which are still publicly available, uh, <clears throat> on Soviet active measures. We sent out truth squads to alert members of Congress, to alert the media, to alert foreign government ministries and the foreign media about these operations because you know, much of this disinformation and deception is designed to work in the shadows, in the darkness. That's the way all criminals like to work. And so uh, if you expose some of the light of day uh, on these activities, uh, then it's going to be less effective. And that's one of the ways that we fought it. We, he wanted to dispel people's illusions about the nature of the Soviet Union, uh, about its DNA, uh, about its intentions and purposes, and he wanted to build a pro-defense consensus in the United States and in the West. He called them an evil empire. He called them the focus of evil in the modern world. He said that they are destined for the ash heap of history. And, uh, and, and the establishment was, was just, they thought that he was going to start World War III by, by, by saying these things. Well, excuse me. When, you know, when he said these things, these words were broadcast over the Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and Radio Liberty, to the people behind the Iron Curtain. And his words reverberated into the darkest and dankest corridors of the slave labor camps in Siberia. And people like Anatoly Sharansky, whose now, name is now Natan Sharansky, he's a member of the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, he was, he was languishing in the gulag, having been accused of being an American spy. And he heard the words of truth of a president of the United States bearing moral witness. And he said, we're not alone. We're not alone. There is hope that if the president of the United States has the moral courage to resist the forces of evil, just by telling the truth and stopping self-censorship by American leadership, then maybe there is hope for resistance. And, and that was the beginning of what I believe is, was absolutely decisive, uh, the decisive strategic element of the American contribution in the Cold War, which is to help encourage people inside the Soviet empire to resist. Now, there were many material things we did to, uh, to put pressure on the Soviet regime. We finally did our own military buildup. And people will say, even though Gorbachev's military buildup was bigger than Ronald Reagan's, we put tremendous pressure on the Soviet military economy. Tremendous pressure. Um, we developed strategic defense which was not fully operational, but which the Soviets looked upon as a mortal threat uh, to their ability to intimidate us with their nuclear blackmail strategy. We implemented a technology security policy. The Soviets uh, could not, didn't have the capacity to develop their own technologies. And we worked in a group called COCOM, the Coordinating Committee for Multilateral Export Control. To, and that was a committee with our allies, our NATO allies, and including Japan and other friendly countries, to prevent the Soviets from buying uh, sensitive technologies, what we call dual-use technologies that can be both for military and civilian purposes. Uh, we worked on sabotaging some of the technologies which we let them buy or steal. Uh, we uh, increased oil. We, we increased oil production. We persuaded the Saudi Arabia to increase its oil production, which would uh, bring about a, a decrease 
in the price of oil and gas. Since oil and gas were one of the principal hard currency earners for the Soviet empire, uh, they were now earning less money that they could use to buy things abroad. We supported the anti-communist resistance movements in Central America, in Southern Africa, and in Afghanistan. And we supplied arms to the Afghan Mujahideen, and uh, they ended up finally driving the Soviet army out of their country. So there were many, many material pressures we put on them. But none of those material pressures fully explain how a million people can take to the streets of Moscow to demand radical political change. And the, these material things do not explain why the coal miners in the Kuzbas and the Donbas would go on strike, not for higher wages, not for more vacation, not for better pensions, but for radical political change. Perhaps the most dramatic thing about the Reagan policy was that the president started telling the truth. He had enormous confidence because he, he, was, he knew that he was fighting a fundamentally evil and tyrannical force. The truth is the most powerful weapon for the forces of good.